Derrick Henry should have been a Dallas Cowboy. We talked about this over and over and over again all offseason long. Uh, Henry should have been a Cowboy. I'm going to put this on screen right here. And Jerry just sat on his hands. Dallas Cowboys crapped the bed, sharded their pants because the Baltimore Ravens stepped in and said, we'll take him. And Derrick Henry even said that signing with the Cowboys would have been a perfect situation. Even wording that is kind of weird when you have a new home. Wording it that way is odd. That shows you how badly this man wanted to be a Dallas Cowboy. But the Dallas Cowboys didn't even reach out. They didn't even pick up the phone. Because they apparently don't want to win as much as Jerry Jones uh, pretends he does. Jerry Jones is, is crying... Wolf, in terms of how he wants to fix this thing. So the question is, how good is Derrick Henry going to be in Baltimore? Is it a blessing in disguise for, for Derrick Henry and Derrick Henry uh, believers and owners? And what is the solution for Dallas to try and remedy this absolute misstep? Um, the Fantasy Football Show begins now. Live from the FantasyFootballShow.com studios. It's the Fantasy Football Show. Live! Live. Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Smitty is also live whenever news breaks. This news isn't quite as breaking as other pieces of news we throw out here on the Fantasy Football Show during breaking news shows, but we haven't addressed it yet, and we kind of need to. Um, we've had so much other news, Rasheed Rice and... And different things uh, that have you know made us come in here and, and drop uh, uh, emergency live streams. But I want to come in here and address this absolute misstep by the Dallas Cowboys, and and address some of the comments that Derrick Henry's throwing around. It's been like one and two and three days since we've seen comments like this, and I just haven't had a chance to put a, a video up on this. But Derrick Henry saying the Cowboys would have been a perfect situation, but they never reached out. They never even picked up the phone. And like I said. Kind of a weird statement from Derrick Henry to say when he's already got a new home would have been perfect. He's almost saying it would have been more perfect than where I'm at now. <laughs> and and they just sat on their hands. I I the only the only solace a Dallas Cowboy fan has really, or you could say somebody that that is very vested in this running attack, helping keep the defense honest so that CD Lamb continues to do his thing, or Dak Prescott continues to do his thing, or or whatever the case may be. Um, the only solace or the only, I guess, potential outcome that could be good would be a rookie running back. That's the only thing. We can't rely on Dowdle. We can't rely on Zeke Elliott coming in and being the the guy. I, I've said this before. You could bring in Zeke Elliott and then draft Jonathan Brooks and bring him along slowly. Jonathan Brooks is the rookie running back that would have been the number one overall rookie running back had... He not tore his ACL had he been further along in his ACL recovery. So Jonathan Brooks is going to need to be brought al along kind of slowly. And it would make sense to have somebody in place like Zeke and Dowdle combo because they're going to break by four or five weeks into the season, especially if you give Zeke the workload he had at the end of the year where he was actually kind of productive in the PPR game and not so productive uh, productive between the tackles. You give Zeke the PPR work, you give Dowdle the between the tackles work, you ease Jonathan Brooks in, and then by midseason, maybe you have one of the more underrated rookie running backs in this 2024 running back class, not because of name, but because of people doubting his recovery time frame and timetable. I, I don't I, I don't know what I can really say other than it's got to be Braylon Allen. It's got to be uh, Jalen Wright. It's got to be Trey Benson. It's got to be Jonathan Brooks. I don't even know that Blake Coram's the answer. I don't think Blake Coram will survive as an elite running back in the National Football League. I said this over a year ago when he was going to declare last year with the, the rookie running back class from last season and be in the same class as Bijan and Gibbs, I said he was a bust. I didn't like Blake Horn one single bit. Now, he returned to college. Of course, I liked him at the college level, but as an NFL prospect, he returned to college and did very, very good things. Played really hard. And he's got the heart of a lion. 
And and I want to, before I start tearing his fantasy football and pro football prospects down, I want to first tell you that there, there's not many players that, that play with the heart and the determination and the grit that Blake Corum plays with. So I want to give him his his flowers there and say that Blake Corm is a is a monster in college and, and what a good dude what a good dude what a good teammate what an amazing person what an amazing athlete what an amazing uh, a player that has tenacity and grit and drive and if anybody can overcome what I'm saying the, the obstacles that I'm that I'm pointing out it's him you know and he could go to the Los Angeles Chargers and be spoon fed force fed and then be pretty productive. That would be the only scenario where I'm not writing him off as like a total like avoid and bust would be in LAC, and I think he really is coming. Uh, he really is he's coming in uh, as a strong candidate to be in LAC. I think that's where Blake Corm's probably going to land, and then we have a conversation around will he be spoon fed enough to be productive there, and we'll, we'll have that conversation. But if he went to Dallas, even I don't even, I don't like it. I think he's split with Dowdle. I think he's split with Zeke. I don't think he takes over. I think he gets injured. He's a smaller guy. All of his metrics are are very bottom of the barrel in terms of, uh, really from top to bottom. His metrics are all near bottom of the class in terms of explosiveness, etc. Touchdowns were through the roof. The numbers were through the roof. But he played an amazing offense that fed him tons of touchdowns. We need, in Dallas, if we want a Dallas hardcore between the tackles, top 10 potential running back, we need Braylon Allen, Jalen Wright, Trey Benson, or or Jonathan Brooks with another player like Zeke, or maybe it's just Dowdle and Brooks that that help Brooks get eased into it. Now, on the note of uh, on the topic of of Braylon Allen, Braylon Allen is ironically training with Derrick Henry. Now, Derrick Henry looks like a monster next to both these individuals, but Braylon Allen on the far left um, is still a big boy. He's still a big boy. He's the big dog of this class. He is the big bruising between the tackles running back. In this draft class, he looks small next to Derrick Henry, but he is absolutely uh, still a big force at the NFL level in terms of size if he gets into the right situation. And I think that it is a good spot in Dallas. If Braylon Allen ends up being the starting running back for the Dallas Cowboys, you're going to see Smitty cranking out a lot of Braylon Allen content. And and I think Braylon Allen, Jalen Wright, Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, one of those guys will be a moon man. It will be the guy probably in Dallas or maybe another environment. Um, there aren't a lot of places where I could imagine just vaulting somebody into Moonman territory as a rookie running back, given how weak the rookie running back class is, given how these these rooms have been filled already. Baltimore got their running back in Derrick Henry. Buffalo, they seem to be leaning toward James Cook as their their long term answer for the for the moment. Jacobs went to Green Bay. We've got really not a lot of landing spots that are very, very attractive. Um, Barkley's in Philly. Uh, Aaron Jones in Minnesota. We have literally not a, a single spot that even looks like it could be a very appealing place. I mean, Zamir White's in Las Vegas. We don't want a rookie going there. Um, Denver, we want Javante to finally get unleashed. Minnesota, uh, I'm sorry, Aaron Jones. Yeah, Aaron Jones already said, right? Yeah, already already said Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, um... Chicago brought in Swift. Uh, there, there really is, though, unless LAC brings in a rookie like Braylon Allen, Jalen Wright, Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, then we're having that conversation. But I still believe this is a running back rotation. New York would be interesting, but Barkley failed there. You know, um, Pollard's in Tennessee. There really is no place for an RB to go. Stevenson bounce back candidate in New England. It really is Dallas. I, I can confidently say that the only rookie running back I'll be touting Moon Man capable will be the Dallas Cowboy rookie running back. And it is the one situation, the one opportunity that the Dallas Cowboys have to remedy their sharding and crapping diarrhea all over the bed. Because that's what they did. You had Barkley, Jacobs, and Henry... You have zero excuses as to why you didn't bring one of those players in. You have zero. You have negative excuses as to why you didn't pick up the phone and even call Derrick Henry because he says right here, he wanted to go there. It was a, an ideal, perfect, quote-unquote situation, but they never even called him. They never even reached out. 
They didn't pick up the phone once. Jerry Jones didn't even have a preliminary conversation with Derrick Henry or his camp. So, absolute, absolute travesty. And and while I don't know that Derrick Henry, at the age of 875 years old, can have a 1,200, 1,400-yard season, even in Baltimore, I think he's in for a double-digit touchdown affair. And even if it's 912, 914, 915 touchdowns, maybe he does get 1010, 1045, 1090, maybe 1100 even. It's possible. Uh, he's getting the, the 12 to 15 touchdowns. He's getting two to three multiple touchdown games. He's having at least one three TD game. This is what Gus Edwards did in Baltimore. This is what Derrick Henry is going to do in Baltimore. Baltimore got a, a guy that can help push them over the hump. This is a team in the Baltimore Ravens that was asking Lamar Jackson at every phase of the playoffs to carry the team and not falter even once. Same thing with Dak Prescott. Dallas Cowboys, let's have Dak every single phase of this carry the entire team, get it to CeeDee Lamb, who's going to obviously carry by proxy. But at some point, Dak can't do it all and Dak's going to falter, hence why Dallas and Baltimore both exit the NFL playoffs unexpectedly early here and kind of a right, right around where we predicted either Lamar is going to flip the switch and, and go in the other direction and not be able to carry the team and everybody come in and say negative things about Lamar. It's not Lamar's fault. Baltimore did the right thing. Dallas did not. Jerry Jones sat on his hands. Let's see if he remedies the situation to the to the best of his ability and brings in an RB and brings in one of the top four RBs, not just any RB, one of the top four. Benson, Jonathan Brooks, uh, Jalen Wright, or Braylon Allen. He's got to bring in one of those guys. Bucky Irving, I like him. He's not going to get it done. You know, you know who else is another player that I think is a workhorse beyond all workhorses in the making, hiding, hibernating, a moon man extraordinaire. In fact, I might put him on the moon man maybe now, or maybe we'll announce it now, but we'll do a more uh, official unveiling. But Frank Gore Jr. Frank Gore Jr. is probably my favorite running back in this entire draft class right now. And I don't know that a team's going to give him a shot. I don't know if he could land in Dallas and really get a, a, a chance. The problem with Frank Gore Jr. is he'll probably go pretty late. And the team that invests late draft capital in an RB has to have that mentality that, that Sean McVay has where he says, I don't care. I believe in you. If you produce, you'll be my guy. Most teams will say you're a fourth or fifth round guy. We have no commitment level to you whatsoever. And the odds of a fourth or fifth or sixth round rookie running back Ever becoming an elite player in the NFL is very low. It's not impossible, but it's very low. His pedigree is different. I love this guy. I hope Frank Gore Jr. lands in, in a crafty situation. Um, do I think Dallas would take him? It's possible. It's possible they think Dowdle can man the fort. They bring in Frank Gore Jr. and he takes the job. And that's what we need to happen. We need Frank Gore Jr. to go somewhere where he can take the job from somebody. We need him to go to a team. Take a look. Wrong button. We need him to go to a team that has a running back in front, right? Like the Bengals, let's say. And the Bengals think they got their guy. I don't, I don't know that they really do. And Frank Gore Jr. goes to the Cincinnati Bengals, grabs a hold of the job, and never lets it go. Uh, a situation like maybe even... Maybe even Minnesota, where you got Aaron Jones, he's an older player. He, They think they got something in him, and, and he's too old to even get it done. Uh, a, a location like maybe in... Um, I don't want him going to Denver. I want Javante to get a shot, nor do I believe that, that, that Sean Payton knows what the hell he's doing right now. I think... Um, New York is not where I want anybody to be, but it would be an interesting place where he could climb really quickly. The Chargers would be interesting if they would use him. And the Cardinals could be interesting long-term, even though they've got Connor now. The Washington Commanders could be interesting long-term, but look very cloudy. The Washington Commander running back room, it reminds me a lot of the New Orleans Saints running back room when Alvin Kamara landed in it his rookie year. It was crowded as Washington's. It was crowded as hell. Everyone's like, there's no way Kamara... A, Kamara's too small. And I and I, I was 
I believe highest in the entire industry on Alvin Kamara via the expert rankings that were compiled that year throughout the industry. I was higher on Alvin Kamara than anybody. I said he'd be a top five running back, not a top 10, not a top 15, a top five running back landing in a crowded wire, a crowded running back room when everyone already doubted whether he could be a workhorse type running back at the, at the NFL level. He's too small. He won't be trusted. The coaches won't give him the ball. So understand when I, when I tell you some of these rooms look very crowded right now. Eckler's too old to even worry about long term in Washington. Brian Robinson will find out what he's really made of this year and could he could he be the long term answer there? Maybe, maybe not. Real good shot that this offense is potent enough, crafty enough for the future to be a good spot for a guy like Frank Gore to grab it by midseason. Uh, Buffalo would be interesting, I think. Frank Gore Jr. could take the job from from James Cook at some point. This is where I this is where I kind of lean right now with the Dallas Cowboys situation. Completely disappointed, completely dumbfounded, completely in in, in awe in a very bad way. <laughs> My jaw has dropped. You know when I see comments like this from Derrick Henry saying he wanted to go there. We all knew it was the right location. Analysts everywhere thought it was the the right location. ESPN analysts were like, he's going to Dallas. I said he's going to Dallas. I think I even said, and I thank God I backed down on it. I said I'd almost put a tattoo on my forehead if the Dallas Cowboys didn't end up with one of Jacobs, Henry, or or Barkley. Remember that? I said I said I'll almost I'd almost tattoo on my forehead something funny if they didn't bring in one of those RBs. It felt like an absolute lock. Remember the Barkley board, Dallas, uh, uh, Houston. And, and and what was it? D- Baltimore. Dallas, Houston, and Baltimore. We'd always constantly talk about this running back board and say, how in the hell could this go in a different direction? It can't. Dallas is going to get one of them. Dallas is going to get one of them. But just goes to show that, 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 that coaches and logic don't always go hand in hand. <laughs> it doesn't go hand in hand. Uh... Derek says, salute, Smitty. Smitty, I'm mad at the, at the Dallas Cowboys, too. You're a Dallas Cowboy fan. Absolutely, bro. Appreciate every single one of you in here. First in the building tonight was Matt O, followed by Young, followed by Smooth Criminal, followed by Blackbeard, moderator-in-chief in the building. Appreciate you. Uh, Perps in the building, uh, top of the Saturday to you. Thank you, Perps. Appreciate you. Hit that thumb up button. Says, great, Scott. Phone lines are open. Dial on in. Dial on in. If you would like to have a conversation around not just this topic, but we try we try to hit on these these topics we're, we're currently talking about too. So please, if you could, cater one of your questions or at least the beginning of your call to this conversation. But let's do it live. Call into the show. Call, call, call into the show. Dial in. Dial in. Dial in. Your boy is here to assist you. Your boy is here to help you with your fantasy questions. And your boy is here to have a conversation around this specific topic if you can. If you can muster up something. Um, where, where, did my, where did my graphic go? Did I delete it? There it is. So dial on in, dial on in. Uh, I'm going to try and read some of these, these uh, questions in the chat. Pull them on screen as we wait for a phone call. Um, going, uh, Derek going to have to draft a running back early, going to have to draft a running back early. Um, you guys know my stance, best player available, but man, do I like Derek Henry in round four or five. Uh, the fact that Henry hasn't climbed into round two is kind of shocking to me. I I think a lot of people are prepared for the drop off we've been talking about for two years now. And I'll admit being a part, a party of, of, uh, to the, Doubting Derrick Henry um, a little too early camp. But, you know, it's one of those things where we're going to be right 80% of the time, maybe 90% of the time, avoiding 29-year-old running backs and even 28-year-old running backs. What's up, Carl? You're live. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, Carl. What's up? Hello, hello, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Hey, um, well, considering that Rico Dottle is kind of like a – he got resigned, so he's Crap. kind of like a lone man, kind of like a Zemir White situation. So, how do you feel? 
Oh, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm interrupting you every time you say Dowdle. I'm saying crap. I I don't I don't hate Dowdle. Is there not? Is there a possibility he's a kind of a nice little surprise? Maybe I'm not going to call him a bus, but I'm certainly not riding the the Dowdle train right now. I'm a little doubting Dowdle right now. I doubt uh, he'll. Yeah. I doubt he'll ever work out. <laughs> Hey, you know, that's a good one. You know, I'm going to take that. That's a good one. Um, I don't know. He's kind of, you know, he got the extension. So, uh, I kind of want to look his way, but uh, I don't know. Maybe Terry Benson gets to top him. I don't know. Well, bro, you, I hope you're not looking his way too hard because they're about to draft a rookie running back. Although, I said they're about to bring in Derrick Henry, Barkley, or Jacobs, too. But I, how do you not draft... How do you not draft one of the top four running backs if you're Dallas? How how do you not? Maybe they're going to show us how. But if you start investing a Rico Dowdle right now and they draft Braylon Allen or they draft uh, Jalen Wright or they draft Trey Benson, probably the top-ranked rookie running back right now, how are you going to feel about Dowdle then? Because, I mean, you're... you're I won't you're, like him at all. Okay, like so all. why would you go after him right now? Why would he be interesting at all to you right now? At all? Because you're you're There's looking at the team most guy. likely to take one of those four running backs in Dallas. There's no other team that There's needs a running one back. Small guy. What? Last year, they really the Cowboys really wanted Dalton Kincaid, but the Buffalo stepped up and sniped them. And I'm kind of afraid that they're going to get sniped all day and night. What are you talking about? So like during the uh, NFL draft, it seemed like uh, because they lost. Uh, I forgot who their Titan was, but it seemed like they were trying to get Dalton Kincaid in the uh, draft last year. But, you know, Buffalo actually traded up and sniped them. So, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of worried that they're going to get sniped again. Uh, what player do you, are you worried about getting sniped on? All the running backs. All the good ones. All of them, huh? <laughs> yeah, I feel like... I, I don't know. I really... I feel oh, like uh, the Cowboys are kind of uh, kind of suck at drafting. They're gonna, they're gonna take them all, huh? <laughs> Buffalo is just gonna nab them all up. There's a lot of them, Chris. Don't worry, or Carl. Sorry, Carl. There are a I'm lot sure. of them, Carl. There are I'm a lot sure. of them. Okay, they're all mediocre too. They're all media mediocre. The, the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys sharded the bed, hardcore diarrhea all over the place. Because you had three running, but you had the best. Best running back free agent pool to grace the NFL in the last decade, many are saying. And the Dallas Cowboys didn't even partake. They fell asleep at the wheel. Jerry Jones took a big nap right during the middle of, of the beginning of free, or during the beginning to middle of free agency. Woke up and all the RBs were gone. Derrick Henry waited by the phone like, a, like an idiot waiting for Jerry's call. Just sat there. Didn't go out. He, he was invited to the movies. He didn't go. He was invited to the gym. He worked out at home. He was invited out to dinner. He ate meatloaf with Ma. He sat by the phone in the fax machine in the kitchen while his mom stirred a, a pot of meatloaf stew. And he waited for the phone and Jerry didn't call. So the Dallas Cowboys put themselves in this pos position. They made their own bed. But I'll, t I'll tell you, there, there are four or five running backs they could draft and I hope to God they don't crap the bed. But you can't blame it on Buffalo because Buffalo may take one and they're not taking them early. You know, they got so many wide receiver needs and other needs. They, they let like, they have like seven holes to fill. I doubt they're worried too much about the RB room early on in the draft. So I think you'll be okay. I don't think Buffalo is out to get you at the RB position. I think, I think who's out to get you is Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is the one that's ruining your opportunities. <laughs> Uh, that's a good point. Hey, thank you. All right. Hey, Carl, appreciate you, bro. Call back anytime. You're yeah, always yeah, welcome here. All right, later. <laughs> and we're what about Buffalo stealing all five of the RBs? Uh, Jonathan Brooks would be a fantastic pick for anybody that is patient enough to wait on him. You know, you just don't want to run Jonathan Brooks out there too early. You know, you don't want him getting like 18 carries a game in week one. You know, you want to ease him in a little bit. Kind of like Brees Hall got eased in. It was it was a perfect amount. I've been trying to let him know that. So Superfish, don't be so hard on yourself. It's not about how long you've been here, but what you've done while you're here. Ron's not 
an OG. That's right. But he is a legend already, says Blackbeard. All right. Um, phone lines are open. Dial in. Perp says, going to have to draft a running back early. Oh, yeah. That got me on a tangent on that. I was going to say that uh, I love Derrick Henry in round four. So if you end up like not needing to go early RB, but early RB is great. Early RB gets you Kyron and Gibbs together. Early RB gets you Kyron, and you can still draft a, a Garrett Wilson. Um, you can still draft a Marvin Harrison Jr. and Brees Hall together with Brees Hall in round one, Marvin Harrison Jr. in round two. I'm not a, a opposed to a wide receiver one being Marvin Harrison Jr. Round, in round two. I'm not opposed to it at all. I'm not opposed to it one single bit. But always go best player available. Put the lotion in the basket. That's right. It puts the lotion in the basket. <laughs> uh, maybe I need to get my bathrobe out on that note. Ron, Ron Navy, please hold for the fantasy football show. Hello, you're live. <laughs> I just woke up. I bet. You're, were you in the Lazy Boy from last night? Last night's show? Did you pass out and no. just wake up right now? You want, you want a good laugh? I sure. Was actually, when I was on the phone, I was I was sitting in the garage, and I fell asleep. I didn't wake up until three thirty this morning. In did the you, garage. Did you wake up with the fo- the 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 YouTube playing? <laughs> <laughs> I was, your, your show was over with. So yeah. The blank screen. Uh, yeah, it was. It That's was, hilarious. It was bad. We said goodnight to yeah. you. We said goodnight to you. <laughs> Garrett Wilson and Alave overrate are overrated. This is Goose Gaming. Uh, Goose, I don't know. If I, look, Alave is not overrated, but I can understand if you're like his fantasy value is overrated right now until he gets his quarterback situation, uh, you know, handled. Which he may or may not this year. Car, New Orleans is just stupid. They could have got. They could have got Fields. <laughs> they, 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 they thought they didn't think about getting Fields. Like how could you not? How could that not cross your mind? So I'm 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 not in agreement with you, but I'm I'm understanding and I'm also avoiding Alave in the second round, and that that it pains me to say because he was one of our favorite wide receivers. He reminds me of Terry McLaurin. I don't think we're wrong on Olave. I think he's in a he's just starving for a QB. McLaurin has been a top five to ten wide receiver trapped in a situation where he cannot possibly produce top five to ten wide receiver numbers consistently in Washington. We'll see what he finally gets to do now, but he might be right at his end. I hope that he has a, a, at least a year or two to get to get it out of his system before he starts, you know, declining. But Olave reminds me very much of McLaurin. Top five to ten, not in a top five to ten situation, but you know, hopefully that, that changes. I will say Garrett Wilson, I think you're you're maybe reacting off of last year's disappointment and you're not gonna give him a fresh look. And if Aaron Rodgers went down, which he's an older player and I'm worried about another Achilles tear on the other side of his, of his body, but if Let's say they take like Joe Milton or something, which would be really good for the Jets. They better take somebody. They they should draft Penix Jr. To be honest, but um, I I think you're I think you're gonna you're gonna wish you had at least one share. Maybe don't quadruple down on Garrett Wilson shares in case something goes awry again. But you're you're gonna be very sad not having a share of Garrett Wilson. What Garrett Wilson did last year with no quarterbacks was actually remarkable when you really look at the numbers and say to yourself, you know, this this guy had a rotation of garbage and he, he was still getting targeted like mad. And he was still fought. Like, imagine what's going to happen this year. It's going to be it's gonna be nice. I, I would say that I, w- I would take a second look at your, uh, your Garrett Wilson evaluation is all I'd say. LSU wide receivers are beasts. They sure are. Superfist dropping a $5. Could you take a look at our teams in the slow draft? Yeah, I'll have to. I, I probably won't be able to do on the live because I've got to go sift through all my drafts to try and find it. Superfist, and it'd be a bunch of dead air. 
on on the channel here for but I'll, I'll try and i'll try and remember to do that it, it's going to be hard if you list your team off i'll i'll give you a, an eval of it but to find that specific draft that concluded i've got so many drafts to go through um but list off your team superfish and, and you don't have to super chat it I'll, I'll look for your comment and then I'll, I'll let me evaluate your team uh travis what's up my guy you're live with with ron and myself hey I, uh, I missed the beginning of the show. I'm just catching up. Just kind of skimmed through. You were talking about Derek Henry. The yeah. Stuff, basically. Yeah, just the, the Dallas crap the bed. Uh, what, what are they going to do now? Derek Henry didn't even get a call. He wanted to go there. Um, But, yeah. yeah that it, was odd. It's, yeah. But, but, it, um, is, it is. You probably covered it. It is almost like they're getting ready to turn the page and move on from Dak if things don't work out this year. I mean, it's almost like... You know, they'll probably sign CD if they'll stay, but almost like they're kind of looking for a clean slate. They definitely, like, Tyron Smith moved on, and, you know, so they need to kind of beef that lineup a little bit more. And they're, like, almost kind of rebuilding on the fly, it seems. Yeah, it's not, it's they definitely, pull it off. it's definitely yeah. not a, not a, a nice idea to, to know that McCarthy and Dak aren't, they're both not getting extended. They're both being put on the hot seat. They're both getting walked out on the plank together. And so they're tied together. They're completely tied together. The future is tied together. These guys got to ball out together. They're going to be pump, become best friends. They're going to push the bunk beds together. McCarthy and Dak are, are, in, are in, the, in the same situation, um, which is good and bad. But the problem, yeah. is, the problem is the confidence that you give a quarterback when you aren't extending them, the confidence, or the lack of confidence you're, you're showing, it, it's going to put both McCarthy and Dak on the hot seat. And, and some people respond well in those scenarios, and some people make them play like crap. And I, I just wonder, I don't want, I don't want, CD Lamb to lose Dak Prescott. I don't want CD Lamb to lose yeah. McCarthy. He already lost uh, Kellen Moore. We weren't we weren't sure how losing Kellen Moore was gonna uh, uh, affect CD Lamb. And at first, it wasn't gonna be good because McCarthy wanted to remember run the damn ball. He started to try and deploy a little bit more of a watered down passing attack and more of a run heavy system, and couldn't do it. And so they reverted back to the old ways and started throwing the hell out of the ball again. And it was the right thing to do. It was the right move. And it made CeeDee Lamb even bigger and better and stronger. But you take Dak and McCarthy away from Lamb. I'm not saying that they can't survive or that Lamb can't survive. But you don't want to go down that road because you have no idea what it looks like. So when people start putting Lamb as the number one dynasty wide receiver, I'm pumping the brakes on that. I like Lamb in the top five. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. But I don't know why everybody's assuming yeah. that this Dallas situation looks the exact same two years from now, one year from now. It might not. It, it could be a, another JJ situation where we have no idea who the quarterback is. You know, next year could be just like the JJ situation. Now. Wouldn't that be great if Trey We're Lance? Still wait and see what happens. Wouldn't that be great if Trey Lance came out cool. and, and okay. just it just became a top like seven quarterback or something? Uh, I I will be so I will be, I will be so happy for Trey if Trey goes out and balls out in yeah. Dallas or something. I don't know. I don't know how likely it is. I don't know how broken he really is at this point. I'm I'm definitely not betting on it, but I'm certainly gonna be cheering for it. It would. I got a disaster this year, or uh, or some type of QB competition next year. Zach is gone, so probably wouldn't be good for CD in the short term. But. I don't think Dak's going anywhere. I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a. They're not, they're not going to get rid of Dak. You got to look at it several different ways. And if you think about it, right? Jerry Jones is old. He doesn't have time to rebuild. An owner's not going to sit there and, and and just throw. He thinks Jerry Jones thinks he can get to the Super Bowl with Dak, and that's what he's betting on because he doesn't have, as an owner. Um, yeah, his son, and his, and, I mean, it'll get down to him, but Jerry Jones is the one that wants the Super Bowl. Jerry Jones is the one that still makes the decisions, and Jerry Jones is not going to rebuild and get rid of uh, Yeah, but uh, here, here's he the thing. Here's the thing. Here's here's the thing, though, Ron, is 
if he signed Dak to an extension and Dak had a semi-mediocre year, he would uh, be obligated to start him again the next year and start him again the next year and be committed to that. But if Dak doesn't go out and ball out this year, he's gone because Jerry's not going to extend him off of a bad year if he's not extending him off of a good year. So, like, it all comes down to, I don't think it's up to, to Jerry, it's up to Dak. If Dak goes out and sharts the bed hardcore, bro, there's no way you can sign him to an extension. Unless you get him at a, just, a, like, thrift store pricing. And maybe you do, because he plays so bad. But why would you want to bring him back if he played so bad? And if he balls out, he might go wherever he wants to go. Dak's got a no wow, tag clause. So he can't even be franchise tagged. The problem is, is Jerry Look Jones what Kirk... doesn't time for a reset. He's already. What? I know, I know, but what... but Ron, he's on a he's on he's on his last year last deal, and he can't be franchise tag. So when I'm, and Jerry's already said he's not he's extending like... him. So so Jerry has no control Look over Dak's Cousins. destiny. So he he can't. He... Jerry yeah, Kirk Cousins got coming off. Kirk Cousins got just got that contract coming off. Of... Hold on, one at a time. One at a time. One at a time. What Dak would get. Go ahead, Ron. Sorry. No, I'm just saying Jerry says a lot of things and 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 goes against a lot of things. A lot of times he says things and he goes against what he says. Um, and he's trying to motivate and he's using it as a mo- I, I feel that he's using it as a motivation. Um, not that he's not going to extend them, but he wants to to motivate them to 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 do better. And everything's not on Dak either, but I know, but you know, but what I'm Dak. saying, Ron, what I'm saying, Ron, is that if he balls out, he's gonna go wherever he wants to go. He's gonna get a big fat offer somewhere. Maybe Jerry offers it to him. Maybe he goes back on a on a on a hometown discount or just says, "I don't want to leave. I want to be with CD." But as it stands right now, Dak and McCarthy are not getting extended, which has been made pretty blatantly clear. And and Dak Dak cannot be franchise tagged. So you're you're saying that the Dak that the Jerry can't rebuild, then he should resign him, and he's not going to, according to all reports. Now, if you're predicting he goes against that and ends up resigning Dak, that's one thing. But there's probably a I would say a thirty percent chance chance Dak is back in Dallas next year on the mere fact that if he plays bad, he's gone, and if he plays great, he's fifty percent gone, if not more, just because someone's going to offer him such a high figure to leave if he balls out enough. Uh- that like the Raiders are going to swoop in or whoever doesn't have a quarterback coming out of the draft class, they're going to swoop in and offer him such a big bag. And he's also going to feel a little bit slighted by not getting the extension. Like you didn't believe in me and this team's going to offer me the world. I'm going to go somewhere else. I would say there's maybe a 20 or 30% chance Dak is in Dallas next year. I don't see how it could be anything higher than that. They could be because they lost a lot of their defense. They lost a lot of defensive players and stuff like that. Here's the thing is Jerry might be waiting until after the draft. He can always he can always give Dak um, um, a proposal, you know, extend them or whatever after after the draft. And I think that's what he's, what he's doing because Jerry knows that he's not in a position to get uh, a, a, a starting quarterback. He's not he's not in any position to get. I mean, to start over, he, he is not. So he's, I think he's going to go back on what he says. I think he's using that as a motive. That's my prediction. Anyways, well, I he, think we'll see it. He'd have to go after. back on it. He'd have to 100% go back on it. But past that, it's like That's there's. He, he's done that before. I. Yeah. The other thing is, unless, unless, um, unless Dak only wants to play there. Why? What's the point of signing a long-term deal now? If he has confidence in himself that he can do what he did last year, he then takes it to market, like Smitty said. And you just look—you look at what Kirk Cousins got coming up, and Achilles injury, and he's older than Dak. At the very, at, even if he wants to stay in Dallas, he can hold Dallas' feet to the fire for an even bigger contract. So unless he's yeah, going to take some, that, you know, Travis. The problem with that, Travis, is. Dak is is right now. He's known as the guy, um, like Cousins was. You know, everybody thought Cousins choking the big game. Dak is that guy. 
Dak is being known. So what teams are going to offer him huge bags of money um, knowing that, okay, okay you play great during the regular season? He has to but he has he to go nuts close. next year. He has to go, but that's that's the whole point, though, Ron. Is he has to go nuts this coming season? If he do, let's say he doesn't get his extension, he has to go nuts this coming season in order to get any sort of big bag from anybody. And if he doesn't go nuts, Dallas is not bringing him back because because Jerry's uh-huh. already was already tinkering with the idea of like, do, do we trade him? Do we do something with Dak to? To clean slate this thing, everybody's expendable at this point. He was very upset after that playoff, embarrassing playoff loss. And so he decided to continue to run him back one year, one more year. But Jerry did say very clearly that he's focused on this year, this year alone. Everything's retooled for this year. Dak also converted $5 million roster bonus to a signing bonus, clearing $4 million in cap. Not that that eliminates the idea of an extension, but he's already reworked his contract this year. It would be, I, I believe, hard to imagine them doing a deal off of that. But it certainly doesn't rule it out. This didn't move money around to the point where it makes it impossible. But reworking your contract and then also getting an extension after that seems a little bit unlikely. But but I I, I do feel I do feel like that it, no matter what, if Dak blows up, he's hard pressed to stay. And if Dak doesn't blow up. He's hard pressed to stay, so it really does comes down to either your prediction of Jerry changes his mind and signs him to an extension, or I don't think this conversation can go that direction. I, I think he's he's as good as gone next year, unless he decides he wants well, to I remain with CD. Do Do you remember right when he, the current situation? Go, go, go ahead, Ron, rookie real quick. Contract, then, Trace. When his rookie contract was up. Remember, Dallas put him through hell, and they didn't sign him to no big deal right away. They made him wait and wait and wait and wait and wait, and and that's what they're doing in this situation, too. They're going to make him wait and wait and wait before they sign him. I mean, Dak waited a long time to get get his first bag. Well, that's one prediction. That's one prediction. Oh, I, I, I'm not saying you're hundred. You're going to be wrong. I'm just I, – it's – I mean, the fact that he, they've already made it clear they're not extending him or McCarthy this year, that's a big prediction that they're going to extend Dak. So we'll see. To me, it, that, that could be even more reason for Dak to say, I'm not going to play this game again. I already had to wait. You know? I think Dak feels yeah, like Cousins. I, I think Dak exactly. feels like Cousins did. Like, Ron, to your earlier point, right. Dak has been slighted that's by the, the Dallas power. Cowboys. Dak has been made to feel like they don't want him. Every year it's a question. Is Dak, even after the, the amazing year he had, you know, just such an amazing year, similar to where Cousins would do great during the regular season and then everybody would question him later. But Dak was to come out of that embarrassing playoff loss after such an amazing year and be probably made to feel for weeks like the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones very, very, very clearly publicly making to be made to feel like the team might move on. Should we move on from Dak? Is it time? I think he, if he has a baller year, I think he could, he could get the bag and, and more times than not, the teams that want to bring you in are way more willing to pay overpay you because they've been desperate for a lot longer. And and Kirk kind of set the market for a deal like that for him. Like, cause Kirk was playing really well. You know, him and JJ were awesome last year. And then he got hurt. And even coming off an Achilles, there was still a team. And that's all it takes is one or two teams to say, you know, we'll give you four years guaranteed all the money. And now and he's gone, you know. Yeah. I'm not saying well, he can't stay. Yeah. I'm not saying. You're, we'll see what gone. happens. Well, it, this is this is a big speculation yeah. here because, like, like I said, as of right now, they've made it abundantly clear that neither McCarthy or Dak are getting extended. So, Ron's prediction is noted, and, and I I think it could certainly it could certainly work out that way. We've seen. Look, the Cardinals said they weren't going to extend Kyler, and they did. So it's certainly possible. Yeah. But but until then, it's like back to the greater point here is the Cowboys are trying to gear up and tool up for a, for a one year shot and Jerry craps the bed at the running back position. That's the part that's hilarious to me. You're, you're not going to worry about the future, and Jerry's saying basically, 
I don't know what the future holds. I'm worried about this year. I'm not worried about extensions. I'm not worried about bringing anybody in. I'm worried about can we win with this team? Let's give it one more shot. If we can't, we're tearing it down. That's basically what Jerry said very publicly. That's why I don't think Dak will get an extension. But to do that, you have to have a running back. And, and this was and this was the most potent free agent running back pool we've ever had, according to almost anybody you ask. And they don't do crap about it. And, and everyone can say it's about money and they didn't have the space. You can rework one player deal and get the money needed for an RB. An RB is practically kicker money. So everybody can say what they want about not being able to afford a Barkley, a Henry, or a Jacobs. But you could have done it if you wanted to. You could have at least brought in an Aaron Jones or something. And you did nothing. And you're worried about 2024? I don't think so. I think Jerry doesn't know what he's doing. And, and, and look at the contract Tyron Smith. He took less money with the Jets to be, be with a team that has a chance to win is basically what he said. I'm, I'm sure he would have came back to the, you know, just if you're in a win-now mode, you bring him back for a year or two as well. You know, you don't make your line weaker. Yeah. Well, I, I can I'm not, I, but I rumors that they want to, they want to, they want Elliot back. They want to sign Elliot back. Yeah, the the thinking is from a lot of people that they they bring in Trey Benson or they bring in Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks would make sense too because if you bring Elliot back and Dowdle and you slow roll uh, Brooks into the offense, it could be he's the best prospect running back, but he just is coming off the ACL tear. So it, it would be good. Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, Jalen Wright, or Braylon Allen. Now, the question is, can the Dallas Cowboys screw this up and not, not draft one of those running backs? Yes. <laughs> they they uh, certainly can. They're certainly capable. I also love Frank Gore Jr. I, I just don't know that teams are going to draft him high enough. He has to go to one of those crazy spots like Washington where it's crowded and everybody thinks it's bad, and then he finds in a year from now he's the guy. You know, he, he, needs, a, a, he needs a Kyron Williams situation. But... We'll see. Dallas needs to do the right thing. They certainly can rectify this to a degree by drafting one of the big four running backs. If they don't, they're further crapping the bed, and Dallas ain't winning crap in the playoffs. Not without an RB. You're, not, not, you're just going to have the same old folding of, of an offense that can't do it game in and game out for consecutive playoff games. You can't ask Dak Prescott to carry a team over and over and over when you when when it push comes to shove and you get into to hard fought playoff you know matchups, it's easy to do during the regular season. But they ha- they needed balance and they didn't give they didn't give Dak what what the Ravens gave Lamar. Let's let's have Henry shoulder some of the the responsibility during these consecutive playoff games. It might be the difference maker for the Ravens, man. It really might be. This This is a team that, that literally everybody thought about this stage in the playoffs against the Houston Texans. We wondered if the Texans could knock them off. But right about this this stage in the playoffs, we thought this is the team that's going to go all the way. Or at least a lot of people did. And, and I was one of them. I'm like, this team is playing on fire. Lamar is playing on fire. But the formula is yeah. you, need, you need a secondary component or you're, you're going to eventually not be able to carry the team. JK. I want to see them draft a receiver too. The Ravens. They, they need someone else. Yeah. There. I like to say Flowers, but they need another receiver. Yeah. Like a Leggett would be amazing. Um, I kind of want Leggett to go somewhere yeah. where he could be the one. And I love Flowers. Leggett could still be the one, I guess, there, but. But we'll see. All right, boys. Anything else? Well, I had a stupid well, dream. A dream that, of. That yeah, stem from you're asking me how Pittsburgh gets JJ, and in my dream they traded the, their second round, a first round next year, and traded uh, Najee. Mm. That sounds like a dream. Yeah. Yeah. Not Najee and Aaron Jones, huh? Yeah. Uh, that super, crazy. Thank you, Superfish, for the ten dollar hauler. Uh, full squad is Stroud. Love, 
Uh, I love the, the, the QB combination, even in a one QB best ball. This was done on Underdog Fantasy promo code Smitty. Link in the description if anybody wants to draft with us at night or draft right now even. Code Smitty doubles your first deposit up to 100. Link in description. So this was Superfish's team from our collective draft. Stroud, Love, Bonix. Okay, Rashad White, Monty, Mostert. Wide receivers are Tyreek, Waddle, Cooks, Lockett, Samuel, Laporta, Jonu Smith, Knox. Yeah, I like it. Mitchell, I like it. Um, yeah, I mean, the only you player I... Tampa drops a running back? Monty, I don't know what Monty is going to do. That would be the wild... Right. Monty and Mostert are your wild cards. I think if those guys explode, one of them explodes, you, that, that team could win it. I think you need that, though. Like that was the only the only place I would maybe maybe look to a different RB if they were there. Uh, do I think who drafts a running back, Travis? Thank you, Superfish. To the moon. Tampa. I I hope they let Rashad White be the lead back again. They I know they could. There were there were rumblings about them bringing in another back. Yeah, they could. I mean, Rashad White did not have good yards for carry. Like he, he, got, he got it up at the end of the year, though. He did. But but he was yeah. like, he was in the third. Actually, he didn't. <laughs> it still was low. Yeah. It was 3.6 3. a carry. And, you know, you could say, you could say, uh, well, we got to attribute that to this or that. But, I mean, the bottom line is, but, you know, he's a great receiving back. And, and I still like him a lot. And if he escapes the NFL draft... You know, without seeing a, a Braylon Allen or one of the big four running backs, Trey Benson, someone like that coming in, we'll, we'll love him. But he definitely is probably one of the top five running backs to be concerned about getting kicked in the nutsack value-wise coming out of the draft. Because 3.6 yards per carry, the Bucks have made it very, very clear they weren't happy with the yards per carry on the ground by the run game. Um, Baker having as successful of a year worries me. I, I know last year I doubted him and he did well. But so part of me thinks that, you know, maybe this 150th plus average in the league is awful. 3.6 pop. They definitely could draft a, an RB. He's totally at, at risk of losing some carries between the tackles, 100%. But I, I like Rashad White. I, I want everybody to know that. But that, that dude's got to run for better yards per carry next year in order to keep the job to next year. Do you think uh, Kate Otten will take another step? Because it seems like every year he's getting better, he's getting used more. Do you think he'll t advance, take another step forward, and and actually uh, start to blossom as a tight end? Yeah, I think Otten's pretty good. Um, numbers, it's, yeah. It's such a deep tight end pool, it's hard to like cool. say where I would rank him, but he's certainly like when you neglect the tight end position and – and you circle around and you're like, okay, I want to grab two guys to try and build cheaply. I love Luke Musgrave, Kate Otten kind of combo. Um, I even throw Kraft in there so that I got Musgrave and Kraft together. Yep. But that that's a that's a good like trio in best ball. Kate Otten's pretty pretty solid. Um, but I wouldn't put him like yeah. in my top seven or anything. But I think he's got potential to be like a crafty rotational starter for you. Especially in best ball. Yeah, it seems like every year he's getting better. They're using him more. Yeah, I mean, he finished pretty good. Luke Luke Musgrave is one of my my deeps. He might be a moon man. Yeah, I, I like I, him a lot. I really like. I think Love's going to take a, a nice step forward, and Musgrave's going to take it with him. So Luke Musgrave, do it live. I know we I know we missed on a conquo, or you could say I missed on a conquo last year. I really liked the conquo skill set was there. He still could pop off a year later, so don't write him off completely because he's got a quarterback now. Maybe Levis turns him into a monster. <laughs> but remember, and Joku took like 80, 80 years to get going. Like he, and Joku's been in the league a while. <laughs> he's been in a while. He's been injury prone, and and he's now all of a sudden a stud. And he he's overlooked too. Like I, I think Joku's going like as like tight end eight or nine or something like that. Seven, eight, or nine. That's a great. I, I mean, I'd rather have him. You I could get he, him I and him. He was, what? He was right after Ingram, I think. Yeah, you could even he's get going right after Ingram in the draft. Him and Otten together or something like that. 
All right, boys. I'll see you later. We'll be live again. Yeah. All right. Talk to you later, Smitty. Later. Right. See you, Ron. Later, Ron. All right. Go have a nap. Later. Go have a nap, Ron. Later. I already have. I know. All right. Later. He rested until tonight. Later. <laughs> Ron will fall asleep during the, the graveyard show for live later. Uh, appreciate everybody being in here. Hit that thumb up button on the way out the door. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Derrick Henry should have been a cowboy. Derrick Henry should have been a cowboy. But Jerry Jones was sleeping at the wheel. What's new? I'm live Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, every single Monday through Friday. And I'm live whenever big news breaks. We'll see you all probably again tonight oh, or today. I might do another show. You know, you know me. If news breaks, I'll be back. Police Hall is eight foot tall. He will always answer the mother freaking call. Don't let him fall. In the third, don't stall. Just give Batman the freaking football. He's brief. He's brief. He does a hole of a job. A hole of a job. A hole of a job. Reese Hall, please report to the moon. Thank you, Superfish, for the double super chats. You're you're awesome. Um, I like your team. I, you know, as much as I love the double QBs, I do wonder what your team would have been with maybe like a Fields and Penix Jr. instead of the extra like a Love and Monty picks. And then what if you had added like a, a Derrick Henry to that, you know, or something like that. So that would be my that would be my thinking with that team, but I like I like it. An H N or a Henry or something like that. ETN. Appreciate you all. Thank you, Blackbeard. Thank you. Sick Nasty. Thank you, Lincoln. Thank you, Perps. Perps to the moon. Later, Jeff. Later, Sir Lex. Later, Goose. Silver Rapture. Prime. Birds. Superfish. Later, Travis. Later, Derek. Thanks again, Superfish. Appreciate you. Oh, Jacobs. Yeah, Superfish. That would have been good. Jacobs in there. That would have been. That would have been sick. That would have kind of made the difference on that team, I think. It's a good team. It's like a 7 or 8 out of 10. It's not bad. But like that could go to like an 8.5 to 8.9. 8.9. Later, Carrie. I'll see you all later. Get breached.